Hello everybody and welcome to Northern Card Gaming. My name is Andrew Brown, welcome back to myself. And this is Theorycraft, the show where we try and get a new deck to work in the standard format. And today's deck is a f new deck that will be coming out in February in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon and Ultra Prism. It is Dusk Main Necrozma Magnezone. It's a new deck. It's a deck that looks pretty fun. It's a different version of the old Magnezone Peak or Pika Zone. And it's maybe a better version than Bulu because it does a very similar idea where it's putting a lot, of, a lot of energy onto a basic and then discarding it all and then getting it all back. So hopefully it's a better one. It's obviously a, a metal thing and I adore metal so I'll be really happy to play it. So anyway, let's go on to what we're going to do today. It's obviously a PowerPoint. Um, overview, let's see how, how the deck works. We want to see what we're doing with it, what the what each card does and what cards will be need to, need to be played in the main sort of idea of it. Next up we're talking about supporter cards. There's a f two new support supporter cards that are coming out in the new set that I think will definitely help this deck thrive. Uh, possible text, so maybe some card like a non X attacker or any of this sort of stuff. And the last is threats of weaknesses, because you obviously got to look at what is in your format to see what you actually are going to play. So obviously first up we see how the deck works. Here is Dusk Main Necrozma, 190 HP metal type. Weakness to fire, of course, like a lot of uh, metal types. And also resistance to second, which is quite good. A 3 retreat cost, which means you can use Heavy Ball, which is quite good. And it, it's always, it's always quite, 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 quite good to have your Heavy Ball. 190 is quite good, because it means Dramp is not killing you as quickly as would do the old Bulu. And... It's got three. It's got three attacks. The first attack for three for, for three colorless is sixty. Call slash is not great. It's worse than uh, Charizard's three for seventy, and that's on a stage one. I guess the stage two. Sorry, this being on a basic is probably okay, and it's gonna be. It's an okay attack. I guess it does guardy. It does one hundred eighty to guardy, but guardy might be as relevant. Uh, but it's one of those attacks that you may have to use. So it's good to have that you know it. The second attack is the main bulk of it. Meteor Tempest. Three metal e energies and a colorless energy. 220. Discard three energy from this Pokemon. Uh, with a choice band, that goes to 250. And you are hitting everything to death. No matter what it is. 250 is a very magic, magic number at the minute. It means you can kill anything. Two, two, um, 220 even means you're killing Zoroark, Galissapod. You're killing a lot of cards, a lot of decks, instantly with just this attack with no choice bands or anything. And that's amazing. You're also discarding the energy off, so you're taking three energy away. That means that even if you are against the Garley, they can't even try to get a comb back on you just because you're discarding loads of energy off. And even against Lele, that means Lele needs a lot more energy on it to try and kill you because you're constantly discarding it off. It's quite a good attack. Um, it's didn't look very good until the card we're going to talk about after this came out, but it is quite a fun ca uh, card and it's quite a lot of damage for what it does. The next attack, Eclipse Sun GX, a GX attack for 3 metal, is a flat 250. And this attack can only be used if you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent. This is quite good in theory. It means that you can get one massive hit off with Meteor Tempest, and then uh, obviously, the it was one energy on the card because there is four as you discard three. That means with the two other supporters, you only need two more energy, and to attach to your dust meter. Not looking for that last energy, which I'll get onto. And it means you can just kill instantly whatever's in front of you, and then go to two prizes, and hopefully be able to take out the la and see out the game with a, another main meteor tempest. But that's just the main. That's the main attacker of the deck. That this dust main. Necrozma. It looks amazing. It's such a good item card and I love it. But we were looking at it going, what exactly can we do to make this deck work? Well then, Pokemon said, here's Magnezone. Magnezone is a stage 2, obviously, 150 HP metal, weak to uh, fighting, uh, fighting, weak to fire, and of course weak to um, resisting the psychic. A 2 retreat cost, which is rather annoying because 2 is the worst retreat cost in the game. It doesn't mean that you can use Heavy Ball, and it doesn't mean you can retreat easily. So, a 3 would have probably been better, actually, just because you, you were able to use Heavy Ball, but whatever. Um, it has an attack, Zap Cannon, 
for three metals and a colorless, 130, and then you can't use it next turn. If you're in a pinch, I guess it can work. It's also a good. It's also in theory a good uh, non G non G X E X attacker. So it could work. Sorry, taking my drink, but it's the ability we're here. Magnetic circuit as often as you like during your turn before you attack. You may attach a metal energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. It is Rain Dance. It is Delulge. It is uh, Lightning Mike Magnezone. It is Rain Dance. We have a way to power up the Dust Man constantly and attack constantly. It is such a good card. Uh, Rain Dance is always good. It's always been used. It's always seen at least a tiny bit of play. And now it's going to be seeing quite a lot more play. Just because there's a really, really good attacker that they can use it with. And it's also quite a good typing. I mean, if you're against Volk, it's not going to be great. But at the minute, that's what we're going to do. We're going to be powering up our Dust Mains with Magnezone and um, hitting things very, very hard. Um, the issue, obviously, always has been with this, has been missing the energy. We don't want to miss the energy. We want to discard it and then constantly get it. And this is difficult. Constantly having to get energy is the issue why, um, why a lot of these decks never really fully work. Um, because you, maybe you miss energy, especially in Vika Bulu, where you have two different energies and you need two of one and only one of the other. It can get a bit rough. But with Magnezone, you just need just need metal, and that's at least a bit better. I mean, you you you've got Professor Letters and all that stuff to get the energy into your hand. But how do you get it back? You can use Energy Retrieval or Pokemon that said don't use Energy Retrieval. Use Mount Coronet. This is Mount Coronet. Once during each player's turn, that player may put two metal energy from their discard pile into their hand. It meant to be their hand, sorry. So into their hand. So it is, it is into the hand. I'm silly. Anyway, Mount Coronet means this deck will be very good. Because now, you're discarding three. You're not looking for three energy anymore. Not with Mount Coronet. You're looking for one. You discard the three. Coronet activates. You take two back into your hand. Now that means you'll need one unique energy to find in the deck. And finding one unique energy is a lot easier than trying to find three unique energies. So that's really, really good. That's impressive. It's a brilliant stadium for metal types. And it's brilliant for this because it brings it to your hand. And you can instantly attach it to that dust main and instantly get that KO. Even better, if you've taken a KO and you're missing that energy, you can then Cornet, take two, attach two, and then GX attack for a full knockout of anything in the game. Because you're ahead. That's brilliant. So it's a constant. It's a brilliant synergy. And it's a brilliant, brilliant card. I love it. I can't wait to use it. But that's how the main deck works. You're powering up your Dusk main. You're then. Uh, at, after that turn. You're then going to be using different things. To get the energy back into your hand. Or from the deck. And then attach and discard. And knock hopefully. Three GXs or EXs out. For game. That's the plan. So that's how the deck works. On to the supporter cards. There's two new ones that came out. Which are very, very good. One is a new Prism uh, Star card. This is Cyrus. Uh, the, the Prism Star rule is you can't have more than one Prism Star card with the same name in your deck. You can have a lot of Prism Star cards, but you can't have more than one Cyrus. If a Prism card is discarded, we put it into the Lost Zone. The return of the Lost Zone in the Pokemon game officially. Uh, will Lost Zone become a thing? We're not sure. I hope it does, because I've always loved the idea of the, of the Lost Zone. Uh, for those of you who are coming from a Yu-Gi-Oh background for some reason, it's a bit like the Banished. It's a very old mechanic from like Diamond and Pearl and that kind of era where you would put things into a Lost Zone which is just another discard pile or you would call it the Banished Zone. But what does Cyrus do? This effectively GX supporter. This card only used if your active Pokemon is Water or Metal. So if you're playing Guardian, you can use this because you've got Vulpix. Uh, any deck that has Artillery can use this because of Artillery. And obviously any metal deck can use it. And obviously any dedicated water Pokemon. Your opponent chooses two of their bench Pokemon. Then your opponent shuffles their other bench Pokemon. And all cards attach them into their deck. You are parallel sitting in them. In theory they can go back to it. But you're you're sending them right to choose two of your Pokemon. And shuffle the rest back in. That's pretty damn good. It's. Good and bad. Uh, it can be really good against stage 2 decks because uh, 3 is an okay number because they need to take away the 2 Lele or something like that. But if they have to keep 2 and take away 1, that means you're taking away one of their big things. One of their big attackers or one of their big supporters. Which is good. Uh, against basic decks, maybe not. It's, um, it, might, it might annoy Volk if they got part of Volk and so you just put it all back. That can be really annoying. But 
It's uh, it's good and bad. I think it's quite cool. Uh, it can definitely work against, especially if, if the other people are like running away with it. You can play Cyrus. They go back to basically a two ma a two person bench, and then you can sort of hopefully power up your Magnazone and get things ready. So I quite I quite like Cyrus. The other card is, in this set will be Cynthia. A lot easier. Shuffle your hand in your deck and draw six cards. Professor Oak's new hint is back as Cynthia, which is quite good. Cynthia is quite a good wee card. Um, I think it actually might take the place in certain decks of Sycamore and stuff because discarding is never discarding is annoying. You don't want to discard constantly with with especially with CH two decks. You want to shuffle them back in and draw six. And I think Cynthia might be better for that. And as I was to say, shout out to Poke Collector for allowing me to use this Cynthia uh, picture here. But yeah, shuffle your hand and draw. It's a very, very good card. I think this will be used in Magnazone just because you're not discarding everything. And you also want the energy in hand. And being able to go to Cynthia to shuffle it all back in means you can work very well with the constraints of the stage one, uh, of the stage two of Magnazone. And so that's a really good, really, really good support card. But next up after that, we have the support card of the energy variety. I have here energy retrieval, Professor's Letter, and Fisherman. Fisherman, maybe not. I'm thinking not, just because Fisherman, there's no VS Seeker anymore. But with Palpad coming out, the new uh, card that lets you put two supporters back into your deck from your discard, Fisherman might be, might be on the cards. And we're not sure yet, but I quite like the idea of being able to pa uh, Fisherman and then Palpad it right back. And it's gonna be good. I hope I hope I hope that does work because Fisherman's a really good card in this deck if you can constantly use it. Uh, Professor Letter is a standard card in these sort of decks because it you just take two energy straight from your from your deck and then attach them because of Magnezone. Professor Letter is quite good. Energy retrieval is effectively my Cornet's ability, but an item. Uh, I think retrieval is also quite good, just because uh, maybe people will will have to play either or. You can play both, but maybe it clogs up the whole deck. So maybe just playing four cornets, but I'm just putting it there because it is a card that could be used. After that, of course, we have support cards that are consistency and damage. We have Heavy Ball, Rare Candy, and Choice Band. I put Heavy Ball there because it means you can search out your your one uh, Dust Main Necrozma. The, fa uh, the fact that it doesn't get Magnezone means you probably won't play it, but it is there as a potential consistency card. Rare Candy, of course. You always need Rare Candy for this sort of stuff. Um, for any any deck, um, maybe you can go even sort of like some deciduous forward players, but mainly you need rare candy because you need that magnezone turn two. Same choice ban. Choice ban helps to kill a load of stage two decks because the last stage two cap at about two fifty, and you're hitting two twenty, so you need choice ban to get up to that two fifty. And onto this, we have possible text. I put up two here. I put up um, silver lie GX, and I put up Reggie Stu. Um, silver lie, if you're I guess if you're worried about this is the issue with the with this thing, is I think I would rather if I'm gonna put a tech in it be Reggie Steel or something like that because Reggie Steel's a non EX GX it means you can kill like nine tails and you can kill Hoopa and stuff like that the um the barrier ones. Uh, Silva is just an idea just because you could tech like a, a line in it means you can retreat between your dusk mains and you can also if you're really in a pinch against a Zoroark you can attach a fighting or a, a, a psychic memory or whatever. Or the new fire lightning me memories that might come out. That'll be coming out soon, and that might actually be quite cool to have. So um, um have, but I think out of the two of these techs, I'd prefer Reggie Steel just because it means Reggie Steel you could take a one in, and if you're against, I mean, um, and if you're against a lovely car uh, like Nine Tails, you could probably just go turn. Um, you can go Iron Head really quickly get Iron Head retreat out and then attack. So I think Reggie Steel out of the possible techs is best in this case. Now the threats and weaknesses of Dustman is a bit is a bit difficult. Uh the main weakness is it has the same main weakness as the old Magnum deck, which is ability lock. Garbotoxin will although it's not seen not being seen play as much not seen play as much, sorry, as other decks, it it's always a, an issue. And you have to assume you will at least face one of them somewhere. Uh it's always an issue, Garbodor. I think you'll be okay because you mean uh, it means because if there's less garb you're definitely gonna be okay if there's garb you got a lot of field blowers so you might be able to take away the constantly these this garb or issue so garb is the main thing glaceon gx so will not stop magnazone so it's not as big an issue as the garb would be 
but that might see more play than Garbodor, which is quite cool because it means that your Magna Zones can just exist because obviously Gleason GX doesn't stop the uh, ability of non EX and GX Pokemon, only stops the EX and GXs. So, really, your biggest threat, uh, uh, non weakness wise, is Garbodor. Weakness wise, it's Volk. Fire will always be a problem for, for this deck, and you can't play weakness stopping Solkaleo due to the fact that you don't want to play like a random co a combo like that. Maybe you could, like, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But it's just the other card, Dust Mane and Cosmos are basic, and then you got a, a stage two line in the middle of another stage two line. Two stage two lines never really works, very inconsistent. Uh, and at that point, you're better just playing Solkaleo anyway, with the Solkaleo, the new Solkaleo stuff. So uh, I don't think it works, so, which means Volk will be a big issue. Um, that's a shame, uh, but every deck has that weakness, and unfortunately, Volk is the weakness for Magnetome. And thanks for watching. That really is the, the a theory craft. It's a very, very short theory craft because the deck is such a easier deck to talk about. But it's great to be back here on, on Northern Card Gaming. And it's great to tell you about this new deck that I'll be testing loads with is Dust Mane, Necrozma, Magnetism. And thank you very much for watching. I have been Andrew Brown. And I hope to see you again soon.